Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to The Mind of the Slave and the Master Part 1. Remember, as long as the mind is enslaved, the body can never be free. Psychological freedom, a firm sense of self-esteem, is the most powerful weapon against the long night of physical slavery, Martin Luther King Jr. 1929-1968 and from Elizabeth Wormley Latimer, it seems to me, in other words, that after Christian peoples, the Arabs are the finest race on earth and that their civilization, where they spread it in Africa, is a great advance on the fetish worship and heathen abominations of the Negroes, but so long as the Arabs are man-stealers and man-sellers, their hands must be against the Christian nations endeavoring to suppress slave dealing and ours against them. And this is from the book Europe in Africa in the 19th century, published 1898. The Mind of the Slave and the Master Have you ever heard that slavery was or is a thing of the mind or a choice? But have you ever tried to understand the difference between slavery and slave trade. The slave trade is akin to the stock exchange we hear about today, while slavery is akin to the stocks. So slavery is not the same as slave trade. When you hear and believe today that our forebears could have sold their wives, siblings, uncles, fathers, etc., do you spend time to ask yourself how you at least can sell your uncle or your father or even your brother today? Or do you simply reconcile that account with how parents suffer to train their children today and they embrace the golden calf of Christianity and turn against their parents, calling them witches, the same parents that suffered to bring them up? Remember the two cases are different. You can forget your parents. You could do anything. You could even kill them. But to tell us you could have sold them. We want you to tell us how you could have, assuming but without conceding, that could have been how they obtained the slaves during the slave trade. The master and the slave. The slave feels obligated to follow the ways of the master, be it in his religion or the golden calves of Christianity and Islam, in his dressing, in his food, in his language, etc. This is why English, Portuguese and French are spoken in most parts of what was Negro land and Guinea today, known as West, Central and East Africa. Togo and Cameroon, that is Cameroon, where both German colonies, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, etc. are either French or English colonies, while Angola was a Portuguese colony. Why do Europeans own African countries? Have you wondered why? And have you wondered how they are able to sustain that evil legacy? Mental slavery. Mental slavery is actually about the mind of the slave that makes the slave amenable to slavery. Why would the slave master coin meaningless appellations and the Negroes defend those appellations? Is it not interesting that Negro towns, villages, communities are all named by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices? And so, why are the countries in Africa supposedly independent, but their rulers are still imposed and controlled by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices? Why do the Negroes accept lies that are from the slave master? And why do Negroes still believe and trust the slave master despite centuries of evil against them? The Monologue Do you read or hear sometimes where the slave master's media and those of their slave hunting accomplices report lies against the Negroes. You can see them doing the same thing against IPOB today, where the army will go and kill people and blame it on IPOB, and the slave master and his media will report them. They did the same thing in the genocide against Biafra in 1967 to 70. And remember, anything they are telling you without allowing the other side to be heard must be a lie. Bear that in mind. So, this is why they kill people and they know within minutes of that death who could have been behind it. And in the event, you remember the case of Dr. Akonyene, you can see that all those who were against the Biafra struggle, who were against the Nandukano, were claiming that it was IPOB that could have killed the man. Now ask yourself, how could people who even in the US, in the UK, who are not living in Nigeria, know who could have been responsible for the death? That's assuming without conceding 
it wasn't premeditated by the slave master and his accomplices. Why do you think the slave master reports lies against innocent people? Or you think it is for no reason? So what about the code of Joseph planting his cup in Benjamin's bag in order to detain him? In Genesis 44, 1-12, do we not all see the same things being done today where people plant contrabands in other people's homes and in Nigeria bring the police to come and arrest those people? What about the people staging a false kidnap and start shouting, bring back our girls? Did you hear about the staged kidnap of herdsmen and some cattle staged by the slave hunters now called Nigerian army? and the police. The police then was used to guard the slave barracoons. And so what about the killing of innocent people to frame the indigenous people of Biafra and Namdekano as being behind it? Remember, if you believe them with all their lies, you are indirectly supporting their evil against innocent people. Worst form of slavery. Have you ever heard that mental slavery is the worst form of slavery? Have you ever tried to understand how Negroes are enslaved mentally today? Do you remember when Reno Mokri stopped the fake news CNN anchor Aisha Sise, a Fulani from Sierra Leone, on lies about kidnap of some girls during the Jonathan administration around 2015-2014? Now imagine if she was not stopped. Wouldn't it have gone into the records that 20 young women were kidnapped by suspected Boko Haram at the weekend of June 9? 2014, when lies are recorded. Do you remember the case of Chibok abduction and how the slave master's media and those of his accomplices were busy reporting it all over the world? Why do you think they do not report on Biafra and Ambazonia the same way? Remember, Nandekan holds British citizenship, but the BBC does not report on it. Have you wondered why? Have you asked yourself why? Did you also know that Aisha Sese, a Fulani from Sierra Leone, wrote a book about the alleged abduction of so-called Chibok girls? The book is called Beneath the Tamarind Tree, a story of courage, family and the lost school girls of Boko Haram by Aisha Sese. Did you know that this was how the brutal transatlantic and trans sahara slave trades were turned into how it could have been Negroes selling themselves? Remember, the lies recorded today will serve as kind of truth to the next generation. So imagine a child reading that book in 40 or 50 years time. He or she will naturally believe that it could have happened exactly the way this person is presenting it. And never forget, why do you think a Fulani from Sierra Leone is the one writing a book about something that could have happened in Nigeria? That's if we assume, but without considering that it was not staged. And please do not misconstrue our position here. It's easy for the descendants of the slave hunters to jump in here to say, you guys don't have human feeling. Why are you so insensitive to those whose children were kidnapped? This is because we know that the descendants of the slave hunters, they lack humanity and common sense. If what they need to prove to the world that the Negroes are barbarous is to kill 2 million people, they will gladly do it. Now we ask you, how come those talking about human feeling and sympathy today do not talk about the people they massacred, their parents, their children and starved them to death in the genocide against Biafra? What about those they killed in their slave raids or razia? What about those they are killing today in defense of one Nigeria and in their effort to frame IPOB. So before you talk about human sympathy when it concerns the atrocities of the slave hunters, please think through it before you make it public, knowing what to believe. Do you remember the case of Dapchi girls allegedly kidnapped and staged along the same lines as Chibok? The only difference here is that the slave master's media were more careful in its coverage. Do you also remember when Aisha Sise of fake news CNN tried to cook up another story of a kidnap in 2014 but was stopped by Rena Mokri. Can you see the same Rena Mokri today has written a book about the new one? What does this tell us about both the abductions and the book writers, not others, like Rena Mokri and Aisha Sise? And so permit us to ask you, do you believe their stories? If yes, why? If not, why not? Please just put it in the comment section and let's see why you believe their stories. The Devil and the Serpent 
In the Slave Master's Code Manual, clothed in the cloak of fairy tales, remember, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Cannot be true because there couldn't have been a beginning without a sun, moon, and stars. That is time. And in the event you don't understand this or you question it, our question to you would be, tell us if the beginning was day or night. And we can very easily see that in verse 2 of Genesis 1, it says the same earth allegedly created by the slave master's God was without form and void. So who created the waters in void earth that the spirit of the slave master's God moved upon? So there we see that the story was made up by the slave master. And please do not get it wrong. We are not saying there was no creator or there was a creator. All we are saying is that the slave master is as ignorant of the origin of the earth as everyone else is. So there is no point using his own narrative or his false claim as a proof of how the earth could have come into existence. After all, he never sent those false narratives to the Chinese, the Japanese, the North Koreans and all that. And so if the beginning is not true, the code of Genesis 3.1 can only be a code because snakes do not speak and do not eat dust as coded in Genesis 3.14. And this takes us to the code of 1 Peter 2.18 and it says, Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. And the new KJV put it this way, Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. This gives us a little idea as to why the government in Africa are slaves to the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices. So you will see presidents and leaders, especially from a place like Nigeria, running to the UK. That's because that's where the master lives. What they do is what the slave master tells them and not what the electorate could have told them because the votes do not count. We shall make a video to prove beyond any reasonable doubts that the votes do not count. The code in practice. During the slave trade, religion was a great tool today. We see someone like Reno Mokri, who claims to be a pastor, writing a book and visiting the slave master with a t-shirt for the release of some girls. The big question now is, what is Nandekano's crime and why is it the British that is against Biafra and Ambazonia? Ask yourself that question. What does Reno Mokri's picture with the British Prime Minister tell us and why do you think they all do not ever talk about Biafra or the release of their brother in Indamdekano, but they are instead they are going there to rejoice with the slave master, the same one that is against them, the same one that has killed their forebears, the same one that was responsible for the brutal transatlantic and trans Sahara slave trades. That's where they are running to. Have you wondered why? And please do not call it Stockholm Syndrome because they all know there is nothing we are showing you here that they do not know. But then, the simple answer is because most of the people you see in power in West, Central and East Africa are descendants of the slave hunters put in position by the slave master. So ideally, it tries to present the Negro as somebody who does not care about his brother. Now ask yourself, why are they looking for Leah Shaibo if we assume but without conceding that such a person actually existed, but not talking about Nandekano, somebody's father, somebody's husband, somebody's uncle, somebody's brother, being abused by the slave master and his accomplices, and those supposedly his siblings all pretend not to see what is going on. Have you asked yourself why they are all behaving the same way? Never forget what we told you that Biafra and Ambazonia will expose those who were responsible for the brutal transatlantic and trans Sahara slave trades. It will also expose the religions of Christianity and Islam as mere golden calves. And before we go into what we have today proper, let us reference Europe in Africa in the 19th century by Elizabeth Wormley Latimer and this was published 1898. Here we see that I have long cherished the idea and I think travelers in Africa appear to entertain it too, although it seldom finds expression that were it not for the connection of Arabs with slave catching and slave dealing, which makes them the enemies of all Christian powers who are pledged to put down such traffic, we should consider them a race, believing like ourselves, in one God and in the efficacy of prayer. 
holding many of our rules of conduct, indeed recognizing all but one of our Ten Commandments, that is, that which has reference to continence and marriage. It seems to me, in other words, that after Christian peoples, the Arabs are the finest race on earth, and that their civilization, where they spread it in Africa, is a great advance on the fetish worship and hidden abominations of the Negroes. But so long as the Arabs are man-stealers and man-sellers, their hands must be against the Christian nations, endeavoring to suppress slave dealing and ours against them. Now, permit us to ask you, how come these two gods, that's the Allah of the Arabs and the God of the Europeans, are the same and supposedly one God, when no one has ever seen whatever brought the earth into existence before? But how could they have known that there is only one God? And how did they know it's a man? And above all, they are now telling us that the same God could have told some people to marry four wives and another people to marry one, and another people are heathen and everything about them is abominable. Have you wondered why they are all speaking with the same language against the Negroes? And above all, the same people that killed and massacred innocent women and children, the same way they are doing today, in the name of their golden cows of Christianity and Islam, could have been worshipping the true God, while the Negroes were not worshipping the true one. Now ask yourself, when they said that the Negroes couldn't be protected because they were worshipping a false God, has Christianity and Islam been able to protect them today? The answer is certainly no. So there. The argument of whether their religion is true or not collapses because those who claimed that the Negroes were pagans as why they were being captured and sold as slaves can today see that the slave masters golden caps of Christianity and Islam have both been unable to protect them today as we speak. Remember, the reason the slave master does not report about killings in Middle Belt of Nigeria, in Biafra and in Ambazonia is because they are behind it. They are doing the same things they did during the slave trade. And to better understand the real motive behind their golden caps of Christianity and Islam and how they used it during the slave trade, let us reference Christian Missions or a Manual of Missionary Geography and History by the Rev. C. T. Blumhardt, Principal of the Basel Missionary Institution edited by the Rev. C. Bath, and this was published in 1799. And here we see that the slave coast, this is the next stretch of shore from the river Volta. Here also there are not wanting European settlements, and what their chief business Hidato has been, their name indicates. Further inland is the powerful and despotic sovereignty of Dahomey, of whose horrible human sacrifices much has been recorded. We want you to know that anybody the slave master wants to attack or destroy, he will accuse the person of something. And on a side note, you can see a video on your screen. It shows a member of the slave hunting terror group now called Nigerian Army, where they killed innocent people in a village in the southeast and then gathered the people to tell them that those people were members of those asking for freedom and that they should be supporting the army instead of their brothers looking for freedom because that's how they play their game. But the question becomes how did they know that those people were thieves and that they stole cars and also that they were members of the freedom fighting outfit called IPOB. Remember, their target is to demonize the movement. We shall look at that in a different video. Our interest is to show you how they operate. The slave master is never smart. It's just the lack of humanity and common sense amongst the slave hunting accomplices that is the biggest problem of Africa. But then, he goes on to tell us that its tributaries are the countries of the Ayos or Igbos and Yoruba the native country of many liberated Negroes in Sierra Leone, where they are known by the name of Akos. The Negroes from this country were in Johnson's time the wildest and most desolate. They could not be restrained even under any military discipline, and yet at that time they became transformed by the gospel into lambs. So that is why they are always fighting to impose their golden calves on the Negroes. Remember, the Bight of Benin and Bight of Biafra were the most popular sources of Negro slaves at that time. So this is why you see the slave master fighting against Biafra and Ambazonia today. And so further here we see the Benin coast. 
and we see that Richard and John Lander, the latter of whom had accompanied Captain Clapperton in his last journey from the north of Africa, which cost the captain his life in Sakatu. Sakatu is called Sokoto today. It is where the Jose Machanti Negro slaves, the Sultan of the Fulani lives till today, so that you understand where this whole thing is coming from. And in the event, you still doubt that whatever is happening in West and Central Africa today, in Biafra and Ambazonia and the middle parts of Nigeria, is related to the slave trade, and that the church and mosque are part of it the same way they were during the slave trade. We see that it is true that the late expedition of the Niger, which in 1841 was undertaken by the English government with three vessels specially built for the purpose and which was accompanied by plans for the spread of the gospel failed in consequence of the dreadful unhealthiness of the climate. Still, as hope is not extinguished by this, we may cheerfully agree with the words above cited. Our great master buries his laborers but his work still goes on. So are you telling us that the same English government, the same people like Boris Johnson that are supporting the slave trade today could have brought us the gospel if there was anything good about it? Remember, it says it was undertaken by the English government. The English were the world's biggest slave traders of all time. And further down here, we see the Bay of Biafra. And it says this last part of Upper Guinea reaches southward down to Cape Lopez. In all these regions, human sacrifices are frequent, and what abominations beyond all imagination prevail still in the interior have been brought to light by the expedition above mentioned. Remember, like we told you, the slave master must falsely accuse the victim, which was what we saw the army do, where it accused people of stealing cars, killed them, and then started telling the villagers that they were car stealers, they claimed to be looking for freedom, but they were the ones stealing cars. Remember, no court convicted them. And anything you hear from them without them allowing the other side to narrate his own side of the story must be a lie. And if you are one of those that believe in something like One Nigeria, or you believe that somebody like Simon Ekba is actually fighting for freedom, even when you can see that he has been lying against others, supposedly in the same race, let us first show you that we are not all the same people in Nigeria and the slave master will always try to use Negroes against themselves and he tells us here that hidden Africa and that the whole population which is computed at 100 or 110 millions consists principally of two distinct races of mankind namely one that which is termed the Caucasian situate in the north and east to which the Moors, the Babas, the Copts, the Nubians and Abyssinians are reckoned to belong among most of whom besides Jews and Arabs have now for a thousand years made themselves at home. Now you notice that Abyssinians are there. These Abyssinians you see here as belonging to the Caucasians are what you see as Ethiopia today. You see how the slave master played that game. And so if you doubted us that then Calloway is an agent of the slave master, here is further proof. And he goes on to say, number two, the Ethiopian or real Negro race, which in a great variety of tribes has branched out from the interior towards the west, the south and the southeast among the former race. Christianity flourished in early times, but is now almost entirely supplanted by Mohammedanism. We shall first take a view of that portion of Africa which has always been pagan, namely the Negro race. And further here, we say that even among the Negroes, various Caucasian tribes have for many centuries become mixed through immigrations of the latter from the north and east. These have frequently compelled the former, that's the Negroes, to embrace the Mohammedan creed, which accounts for such innumerable instances of Mohammedan Negroes being found at this day among their pagan brethren. Both the one and the other are in the darkest ignorance. The pagan Negro especially knows little of the living God. So you see how subtle the slave master is. He must accuse the victim of something, albeit falsely, and then use that accusation as a pretext to met out his evil against the victim. So we see how he tells us here that the pagan Negro especially knows little of the living God. At best, he imagines him to be a God afar off 
who has forsaken the earth and left it under the control of innumerable spirits, these spirits which he calls fetishes, he worships in a great variety of objects and with the most absurd ceremonies he consecrates blocks of wood, stones, plants and animals to become his fetish or god to which he brings offerings and sacrifices and does not withhold even human victims. You see how they are subtly saying that they were conducting human sacrifices. Remember the slave master must accuse you falsely before he strikes. And he goes on to say the Negroes fear the evil spirits more than they love the imagined the good ones, on which account everywhere may be seen the special practice of real devil worship to conciliate such evil spirits. Now permit us to ask you, when the Negroes go to church or mosque today, why do they go there? If you notice, especially those that go to church, they claim to be going to cast and bind the witches and wizards, that's the evil spirits. But leaving that apart for now, he goes on to tell us that another lamentable peculiarity of Western Africa is the slave trade, which proceeds chiefly from thence. Remember, then Calloway has been contracted to misinform the victims of that slave trade. That's how sort of the slave master is. And never forget, they have carefully wiped out the Negroes in almost the whole of Europe. But then, they are facing elsewhere, but the Negroes still can learn. They are instead now claiming to be Indians. And he goes on to say, It was by slow degrees that the coast was first discovered. Its rich advantages, dearly as they were purchased at the peril of life, attracted the trading spirit of Europeans, so that by little and little, the English, Dutch, French, Portuguese and Spaniards erected their settlements and forts all along the coast. Remember, these were the slave hunters. The blind ignorance and barbarism of the natives were only the more welcome to those settlers so that they found no difficulty in arriving at the unfeeling notion that the Negroes were too degraded for it to be any great sin to do with them what they pleased. So you see this subtle game they are playing today within Nandekano. We shall look at it briefly here to show you where they are going and to show you that the slave master is never smart. He is just an human. There is no way he could have given his golden calf of Christianity or Islam to the Negroes if there was any power or good in them. And he goes on to say, moreover, they found thousands of slaves arbitrarily dragged hither and thither like cattle tied together and offered for sale. These cheap chattels the Christians gradually learned to purchase, and as in the plantations on the other side of the Atlantic, in the newly discovered West Indies and America, strong bodied laborers were wanted. These men brokers were their black cargoes. We are more than welcome in those countries. Thus originated the Christian slave trade after the year 1517. This trade became sanctioned by the Portuguese and Spanish governments and even other nations soon connived at all the horrors that were connected with it. Now you see why they are all united against Biafran and Bazonia. And further here we see that the English have their principal place at Cape Coast and possess about 15 forts. The Dutch likewise have some stations of no inconsiderable importance as Elmina. Lastly, the Danes possess many forts in a line extending from 36 to 48 miles, the chief place of which is Christiansburg. They have many Negro villages dependently attached to them, such as Yusui, but rather as confederates than as subjects. So you can see clearly how the ignorance of Dane Calloway is playing out, even though we know he is sponsored by the slave master. But like we told you, the slave master is never smart. The only problem is that the Negroes refuse to read and refuse to use their brains. And further here, we see that the first direct missionary attempt was made there in 1736 by the Church of the United Brethren. A mulatto from Guinea was at that time a student in divinity at Copenhagen. His name was Christian Prothen. He made acquaintance with Count Zizendorf and came to Henhart. And when an ardent desire to preach the gospel to his countrymen became awakened in him, he had a fellow missionary given him to accompany him back to his native country. The letter soon died and Prothen returned back to Henhart. Our interest here is for you to see how they were sending missionaries at that time because they know the effect of their golden calf on the Negroes.